Okay, what we're talking about today is speaker wire and not so much as uh, the outer jacketing of the speaker wire itself, but what is internal to the speaker wire. For example, here is our two conductor uh, 12 gauge passive speaker wire. And some of you may be using them in the uh, speak on connectors, and others may be using them or actually still use them in the type of uh, banana connectors like this. Now, with speaker wires, there is, unfortunately, a big drawback. Um, it's just um, it's a natural occurrence that happens with a copper wire. And what I'm talking about is the oxidation that occurs on a wire. And in fact, let's go to this one here first. Uh, we can see this. My camera doesn't get close-ups too well. Uh, but right over here I don't know if you can tell or not see how dark that is right here as compared to let's put the other one out here for reference or any one of these out here for reference okay this stuff here which you can see right here is all new meaning it's just been stripped but you can tell right here on this one all this dark stuff that you see here is all oxidation. And if you look closer to it, do you see all this green right here? All this green, this is oxidation that has leached its way into the jacketing of the cable and is basically ruining uh, this whole little speaker wire here. Uh, this side here is aluminum, which does real well but it's not a very good uh, conductor of electricity. I mean, it works, but it's not that good. Copper is the best, but this is all oxidation. So how does this happen? Well, if you keep a wire outside exposed without colors on it, and I'm sorry, you have to forgive me, I've got paint on my hands here. If you keep the wire outside, this bright, shiny color is not gonna last very long. It's gonna start turning. Now, in doing sound, it is recommended to use something like this, like the speak on, because inside this connector, uh, the wires are they're connected into the body of the speak on connector. It's keeping it away from direct sunlight, direct from a lot of air, um, as well as a lot of the, um, if you will, the moisture and the molecules that are outside that can cause oxidation in copper. Uh, for example, this one here, actually this one over here, this was a connection that we had in a speak on connector, and this was probably in this connector for maybe uh, two years. And um, actually, the condition of it's pretty good. Now, this one here, uh, using it as a worst case scenario, this was actually left outside and it had been outside for probably three years uncovered. And the jacketing that's on this uh, does not really do very well for keeping out sunlight. Um, this causes a big problem. Now the black jacketing, everything solid, keeps everything out. Even on the zip cord, uh, this zip cord here is rated for outdoor use for sunlight. So this can be placed outside. All right, so let's take a look at the uh, resistance that um, uh, oxidation can cause with speaker wires, which is why it's not a good idea to keep uh, wires outside uncovered because they will oxidize very quickly. So here we're looking at, this is a very short run of it here. And uh, let's see if I get the probe in there. Okay, so on this end over here, we're looking at a resistance of, uh, let me see here, move this around. Sorry, I don't have the uh, really, um, I don't have the provision set up to do videoing. There we go, let's try that. Okay, point 0.2, that's just that point 0.1, very, very slight. All right, let's take a look at this one. Now, this is the one uh, that 
has um, oxidation on it. Just take a look here. Okay, as you can tell, it's got a bit more resistance to it. Now this is probably only, what is this, maybe an 8 inch section of wire. And it's about the same length as the good one that uh, you just saw. But just within 8 inches, there's already more resistance in it. Whoops, my finger keeps sliding around. There's more resistance in it uh, due to the oxidation. So this is why, if you ever see this blue, bluish kind of um, stuff on your speaker cables, you really, you really don't want to clean it off or try to clean it off. The best thing to do is to cut the wire, just cut it, and then strip it down for the next section that you need, which is what... Uh, let me, an example here which is what a lot of this is I can tell on this one here we did oh I'm sorry well there we go on this one here uh, this one has been cut down uh, I want to say which one is this that's the 30 that's letter a 35 30 yeah this one is probably over the years that we've had this cable has been um, cut down probably a half an inch each time we've probably had this cable for maybe 10 years and about every year and a half or so we have to go in we just trim it back just a little bit um, we just sort of cut it back trim the copper back and then reattach it into a speak on and this cable this little piece here um, will work but because of the amount of resistance that's in it I will cause your amplifier to, to run harder to produce the same power uh, that you that it would if you're just to use like a regular cable. But if you use something that's got all that bluish in it, uh, your amplifier is going to run a lot a lot harder. Um, temperature may go up in it, and depending upon your quality of the amplifier, it could cause some serious heating issues. What you don't want to use, and um, I think we've all used these. What you do not want to use. It's actually one of these uh, banana connectors. These are great. They, they do work, uh, but they are keeping your cables here. I got on part one here. They're keeping your cables highly exposed to the air. What you want to look out for back on this is this type of cabling where this is actually copper here, but it is so um, oxidized that um, it's almost... I would never use uh, this type of cabling in my system. As you can tell, just like before, that the oxidation has leached down into the cabling and has turned it uh, green in there. Just a little something that we do here. Even though this says uh, 35 feet on it, this was probably originally close to um, 36 feet, maybe 38 feet. And we always add extra feet to the cables just so after a period of time we can go in Cut the, cut the uh, copper, strip new copper out, and plug it in. Um, so even though it says 35 feet, even though you've seen some of the videos, maybe you've seen more it says 40 feet and 50 feet, they're actually two to three feet longer. And it's just so it gives us uh, room to, to freshen up the copper, copper ends anytime it's needed. Here we got another one of our connectors. And one of the drawbacks with it, and let's get this hooked up in here. We're going to use one channel. All right. All right. This would be like a typical connection. But obviously, with the wires exposed, causing oxidation, there is another issue with these. Uh, maybe with this particular type of connector. Alright, so what I mean by type is um, 
all banana connectors are sort of the same, but um, there is a, a slight difference. Um, this right here, uh, this is all metal, and uh, some other banana connectors are all plastic. The plastic ones are a little bit safer than the metal ones, but the plastic ones usually don't last as long. So, for example here, I'm going to get a uh, shot of this, I hope. All right, so right now, we've got 83 hertz um, sine wave being sent to the amplifier, and it's coming in here, and here's our gain. Okay, it's a solid green, which is what we want. All right. Okay, so what we're gonna do here, there's our master volume right here. So I'm going to be turning that up here really slow, and let's take a look at the output here. All right, the board's up. So let's add some power to this. It'll be good. Just something to show that it's working. All right. Okay, so the problem with this is that even though we've got this thing connected here, and it's generating power. As you can see, if I'm touching just the outside of the banana connector where it screws in, as you can see up here, you've got voltage. So there's voltage across these two leads. There's voltage across these two leads on these type of banana connectors. Now, it's safe here. I don't know if you can see it or not, but it's, you know, the connections themselves are safe, but when you're adding these kind of bananas, banana connectors, you're actually producing voltage across these two points here. Now, it's not much voltage. Uh, right now, it's at 6.7 volts. It's not much, but um, just give it a little bit more power here. Now we're up to 13 volts. But what happens is that, now right here I can just sort of slightly feel something. It's not bad, but the problem is, is that you've got now two ends here that are exposed. And especially if it's, um, if there's any kind of rain or something happens or somebody is wet, they, they go to grab this, um, or if wires, bare wires, don't ask me how, but it could be possible. Fair wires cross something like this, it could easily short out um, this channel in the amplifier. Or um, it could do a, um, it could cause a circuit breaker to go off. But um, these banana connectors are convenient, but this type that's all metal with the probes at the end here, uh, that can be an issue. Uh, let's see here. Let's get that out of the way. And Another thing that uh, people have done, and we've done as well, this is all we've got to do to add um, another speaker to it. So now we've got, uh, we've got a, um, our own load here has been divided in half, but the problem is we, now we have the voltage out here further. All right, hope this helps.